Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at what is a hormone, the endocrine glands, and then we'll finish with a summary. So a hormone is a very important molecule found in the body, and it's a type of signaling molecule that gets released into the bloodstream. So we've talked about how the hormonal system is one of the systems that we use to communicate a detected change and then communicate a response. So a particular gland will release hormones into the bloodstream and the hormones as molecules travel through the blood in order to reach the appropriate effector and then tell the effector which response to coordinate. Because they get released into the blood, the hormones can contact almost all of the cells in the body. And the reason for this is because the cardiovascular system or the blood system is basically distributing blood across the whole body. So the hormones in the blood don't just go straight to where they're required, they get exposed to most of the cells in the body. But they only act on the cells which are able to respond to them. It's only cells with the receptors for the hormone which get affected. So for example, the hormones travel in the blood and they are exposed to every cell pretty much in the whole body. But if the cell does not have any receptors in its membrane, then the hormones don't exert any kind of response from this cell. But when it comes across a cell where it does have receptors in its membrane for that specific hormone, then the hormone can bind to the receptor and then carry out particular responses. And these cells with the right receptors are known as the target cells, and they'll be the target cells of the effector. For any given hormone, the target cells are the cells in the body which have a specific receptor for that hormone. So one hormone will have a specific protein receptor for the right shape, another hormone will have a different receptor, and different cells might have different receptors. So it's all very, very specific and very limited. And the hormonal system works on glands, and in particular we're talking in this case about endocrine glands. So endocrine glands are the glands in the endocrine system which release hormones right into the blood. So using a diagram to illustrate this, these cells make up a gland, and in this case it's an endocrine gland. And what they do is they produce and manufacture the hormone which they're trying to send out to the blood. They then send the hormone out into the bloodstream directly. And usually what we see is these endocrine glands are surrounded by various blood capillaries so that it doesn't have to travel far to do this. And then once the hormone's in the blood, it can travel with the bloodstream to many places in the body because the blood system covers pretty much the whole body. So the endocrine system is the hormonal system. They're the same thing. It's a communication system using hormones as a signaling molecule. So there are lots of endocrine glands around the body. They're different from what we call exocrine glands because exocrine glands secrete molecules or hormones into a tube called a duct. And this takes molecules to where they get used. So in the case of an endocrine gland, we had a blood vessel and the gland released the hormone straight into the blood. However, with exocrine glands, they still release substances, however, they don't release them to the blood. They release them out into either ducts or tubules, which are slightly different types of vessels. So to illustrate this, we can use the organ which is the pancreas in the digestive system, because it contains both types of gland. It contains exocrine glands, which secrete digestive enzymes into the small intestine. So here's a picture of the pancreas. And the pancreas produces digestive enzymes, which get sent into the ducts of the pancreas, and then they get released into the small intestine. So in this respect, this is exocrine because the hormones have not entered the blood, they've just entered various tubes and ducts going along their way. And they kind of face the outside world because the digestive system does face the outside world in both ways. And if you look at this microscopic diagram of the pancreas, these are the exocrine glands. And you can see the little ducts and tubules in the center of them which will eventually all connect up in this tree towards the small intestine. So they never go into the blood. As well as having exocrine glands, the pancreas contains endocrine glands as well. And these are the ones that secrete the hormone insulin straight into the blood. So the exocrine glands sent the hormone straight into the ducts and into the outside world tubes. Whereas if we look at a microscopic image here, it also contains endocrine cells or glands which send the hormones straight into blood vessels, which get distributed around the body. So the pancreas has both this endocrine gland, and it also has these exocrine glands, and you can see the ducts that will eventually lead to the small intestine, but they will never lead into the blood. 
So the examples of endocrine glands found in our body include the pancreas, the pituitary gland, the testes and the ovaries. So the pancreas is part of the digestive system, the pituitary gland lies at the base of the brain, and then we have the testes and the ovaries as reproductive organs. And these are all endocrine glands, which mean they release their hormones into the blood. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.